So what is going on everybody? It has been a long time since my last video. I do apologize for that. For anybody that's still subscribed, thank you very much. Um, but I'm hoping to get back on track with my YouTube channel here. But I want to do a quick video today. This is kind of a down and dirty video. It's not really in a professional setup or anything like that. On not just this guy right here, which is the SH Figuarts Luke Skywalker, but this thing that I got in the mail, which is supposed to be this SH Figuarts Luke Skywalker. This is a 100% authentic version of the figure. This one I purchased for like 20 bucks off of eBay, and I believe it is a knockoff. Um, so I really was curious to see the quality of this thing because even if it's not as good as the regular SH Figuarts, from the pictures and the other reviews that I've seen, it does look leaps and bounds better than the Black Series one. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and get this out of the box and compare it to the real deal. So after you get that tape out of the way, you're greeted with some styrofoam holding in the main box. And then you get this. And this looks really, really close to the real SH Figure Arts box. Um, it's a little bit less sort of high quality as far as the print goes, which is kind of to be expected. But like, if you were just kind of walking by this in public, I don't think you'd be able to spot the difference, at least right away. All right, so there we go, all out of the packaging, and I'm pretty impressed with this for the most part. This is the bootleg here on the right, and on the left is the real deal. Now, the bootleg is not a good figure at all. It's really a bad figure in terms of being an action figure. It's cheaply made, it's not, you know, everything doesn't go together correctly, but you be the you be the judge when they're just standing here next to each other. The differences aren't crazy. The face is one hundred percent better on the real deal, no question about it. But on this one right here, I think this is good enough for a shelf. I think this is way better than the Black Series figure, and I think that for the price, you can't really go wrong if you don't want to pay $130 for the real deal, which is about what it's going for right now. Um, all right, so we've gone macro now, and let's just do a quick comparison of the two lightsabers. This one, you know, pretty easy for either company to get right, you know, or should be. So here is the legitimate Bandai SH Figuarts lightsaber. It is just beautiful, well-painted. The detail is all there from Luke's episode six lightsaber. No complaints whatsoever with this. And then we're gonna bring in the knockoff version. And you can see it's not painted as much, but the handle detail, not bad at all. Not bad at all. For, for the lightsaber you get with it, you could probably paint those ridges in if you really wanted to, but when it's in his hand, there's not a whole lot of difference there. Um, the other difference though, and this is a little bit more noticeable, the shades of green are a little bit off. We can have the legit one there on the bottom and the knockoff on the top. Um, the legit one is closer to the movie and you can see a little scratch right there. Uh, it's more of a, a rich green, whereas the top is kind of like a sickly green. That's the best way I could probably describe it. Um, but once again, when you have the, the knockoff version just by itself, you can't even tell the difference. So yeah, those are the lightsabers. And just like the legit version, the knockoff version has a little spot to place the lightsaber on his belt and also the extra piece to make the lightsaber not have the blade. So that's cool. And then he does come with the four sets of hands that the regular version does. And these are nicely detailed, but there's a reason these are still in the box. And I'm gonna show you why in just a second. We'll go over to the bootleg. And this was a giant pain in the ass. As soon as I pulled out the fisted black hand, which is right here, um, the peg came with it, or half the peg came with it. So you can see how there's an interlocking joint, or maybe you can't, it's kind of tough to tell. I should have done this with the skin colored one. Um, the interlocking joint is not secured at all. And if, you, if I wiggle this too much, the joint will split and the two halves will come out. The same thing actually happened um, up here with the head joint, but I'm gonna go ahead and demonstrate on this side with the fleshy version. 
when I pull, the joint wants to split apart on me. Um, and I really don't want to force this. Okay, yeah, so it just came off. There's half the joint, the other half is left in the hand. So what I have to do is take a pair of pliers. And I think the reason for this is the hands are really gunked up with paint in there. Um, and it's So I have it kind of in there. It didn't really snap or anything. Um, and then I just take that and relock it with the, the pin right there. Uh, yeah, see that just came out, so let me try and... That is just pretty much being held on by friction. Alright, so I forgot to shoot this part, so this is a little bit of a reshoot here, but here is the angry head um, that it comes with. You can see the hair is gold, just like it is on the fig warts. Maybe a little bit more toned down though, I'm not really sure. But you can also see the gapping is pretty bad on this one and the regular head was like that too. I actually had to modify it and you can see up here in the front of it, it's also pretty bad, but it does do that thing that the normal one does where it breaks apart, but you really gotta fight it to get it to break apart at first. Um, Cause it's, yeah, there goes the pin again. Um, it's pretty much welded on there with paint. There we go. Okay, so just got the face off and the pin came off there. Then you have to really freaking pry this off. I'll put some pictures up of the other head. Oh, I took pictures of it when I first got it out of the box and then I fixed it and then I started filming. So, um, and the way you gotta fix it, you just gotta make sure that those head pins go into the hair correctly. because they weren't lining up for me straight out of the box. And then the last accessory you get is the Darth Vader unmasked head. And this is actually really good. A uh, little blemish there on the nose, but it's well painted. The detailing's all there. You can see all the intricacies of the helmet, of everything like that. I'm thoroughly impressed with the, with the Darth Vader helmet, although, I don't think this peg was included with the other one, which begs the question, does it fit on this Luke? Or was it meant to fit on this Luke? Um, we'll try that out at the end of the video. So now it's time to talk about the articulation, and this is just going to be a full-on articulation comparison. So, starting off with the knockoff. Looks up about that far, but he really does want to kind of kick forward once you have him in that pose. Oh, he's falling over. Um, the real thing, the neck joint comes into effect, so you can get a lot more. And then moving him forward, he can look like all the way down. Um, it's great, great range of movement there. Oh, they both want to fall over here. Bear with me. Um, and then the knockoff. There is some neck joint in there, but once again, once again, it just wants to buck back up and that actually loosened up the head. You can see the seam line split a little bit there. Uh, so not great range of movement in the head. Um, you do get some side to side, but once again, it just wants to kick back to its uh, sort of resting position. It doesn't really want to hold in any one position there. Um, with the real deal, of course, you get you know pretty good side to side. It's not on focus, so we'll move back. Sorry about that, had to adjust some angles. So, moving on to the arms, you can get him to fly up a decent way. Um, the butterfly joint does kind of come into effect there. We'll leave him spread eagled like that. And then the legit fig arts, also, he can get a little bit better. For the elbows, the elbows are a little bit weird. They were facing the wrong way out of the packaging, had to kind of fiddle with them. Um, but it goes up a decent way. I don't think it's as good as the regular version. Let's see here. Yeah, not quite as good as the legit version. Not quite as good as the legit version in my opinion, but pretty good, you know, not terrible. 
The wrists, I really don't even want to mess with because it's going to fall right off. So I'm just going to kind of bypass that altogether. And then the butterfly joint does come across the body the same way it does on the legit version here. Um, maybe even a little bit farther. Um, on the Yeah, the knockoff goes farther with that uh, across the body thing there. But the butterfly joints on the knockoff are a lot uglier and more noticeable than on the legit version. You can kind of see that hopefully right there. And for the waist, um, you do have an ab crunch, but he, oh, yeah, he just kind of busted in half right there. Um, the actual figure arts actually will do that too if you force them too much. But uh, yeah, not a whole lot of forward um, from that ab crunch versus on. Um, talking about the legs, you get a little bit of kick forward from the knockoff version. There is no drop down joint though. Um, I don't think the this one has it either. If I'm yeah, this one doesn't really have it either. So you get the same kick forward as you do on the legit version. The legs, you have a single jointed knee, goes up about the same as the legit version. Oh, that's weird. I don't know why that one wants to bounce back on mine. Never actually had that before. That's weird. I've never tried to bend that knee like that. Um, and then for the ankle, it gets forward that much. Back, not very much at all. Um, it does have the toe joint. Um, a little bit stiff, but the toe joint is there and it does work. Compared to the real version, a little bit of forward. Uh, about the same back, and then also the toe joint it does function as well. So here's a quick attempt to get both figures into the same pose. I'm going handheld for this shot here. Um, and you can see that the knockoff version is a little bit shorter than the legit version, but overall, like when it's on the shelf, I think this looks pretty good. And then just for some scale reference, here he is next to the Pilot Luke from the Black Series, as well as the 40th Anniversary Darth Vader from the Black Series. Then if you want to compare more apples to apples, so to speak, here he is next to the Farm Boy Luke. And honestly, the knockoff is closer in height to the Farm Boy Luke than the legit version is. The Farm Boy Luke's a little bit taller than the knockoff, but it is closer to the knockoff. So that's interesting, very interesting. All right guys, so at the end of the day, I don't usually support knockoffs of anything. I think, you know, it's a company stealing another company's hard work and that's that's never a good thing. But I have to be 100% honest, if you are a collector who you love Star Wars, you love to have the very best that can be offered, I think you should get this figure instead of paying the resale prices on some of the other ones. Definitely get this over the Black Series. I think this is a much, much better figure than the Black Series. If you can deal with the weird hands and you can deal with maybe having to modify the figure a little bit, I think this is a fantastic investment for its, you know, $20, $25, whatever it is. And if you just can't afford the $130 or so that the legit version of the figure arts Luke is going for, I think this is a perfectly good stand-in on your shelf until maybe someday Bandai does. Um, decide to do a reissue of that figure. If I didn't have the legit SH Figure Arts Luke, I would have this and this would be on my shelf. I'm being 100% honest with you guys. This figure's really good, uh, just in terms of its overall look. Um, its build is not great, it's pretty cheap, but you know, that is what it is. I'm gonna be honest, if, Ban if uh, I almost said Bandai there, if this company, whatever this company is that made this figure, if they do a Darth Maul, I'm getting it, and that's gonna be my main Darth Maul. I don't have the Black Series, and I missed out on the latest re-release of the Fig Arts, and I'm not gonna pay $130 for that thing. I don't think that it is worth it. Really hope that comes to pass. Really hope they do that. Um, so yeah, overall, I think this is a worthy investment. Let me know if you guys liked the review down in the comments. Um, Hopefully this was informative for you guys. Maybe if you're trying to buy the legit version, you're trying to determine if it's fake or not, um, this would be a good video for you. Yeah, that does a click in, but that is one of the most horrifying things I've ever seen. I saw It recently. That looks like something out of It. 
Uh, I need to get that out of here. Okay, guys, thanks. <laughs>